Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Wagner. I am a communications coordinator with the Denver Department of Public Health and Environment. And welcome to the Denver Animal Shelter. We're here today because in November of 2020, voters elected to repeal the pit bull ban. And what that means then is that pit bull uh, dogs, restricted breeds as we call them, are allowed to be in Denver legally only if they have a restricted breed permit. So today we're going to launch this program and we're going to talk with two Denver Animal Protection Officers, Lieutenant Josh Rolf and Sergeant Avery Borden, and they're going to go through an evaluation of an assessment they've already done on a dog. Um, before we get started though, I would like to introduce Councilman Chris Herndon. And Councilman Herndon has been an amazing supporter of um, the breed assessment process. In January, he actually proposed this process so that we could keep the restricted breeds legally in Denver. Councilman Herndon, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Kyle. And thank you all so much for being here. This is a very exciting day as the city of Denver is moving forward in modernizing our animal ordinances. And I want to sincerely thank all of the voters who voted in November for us to move forward as a city. And I think that this can be an excellent model for other cities that still have uh, breed restricted legislation on the books. And I also want to encourage those who own animals that fall under the umbrella of pit bull that you can follow this process and understand how it's very safe and easy for your animals to come through and get your permit for your pit bull. And I also want to encourage all animal owners to remind them that all their pets need to be licensed in the city and county of Denver as well. So please make sure you do that. So once again, thank you so much for coming and thanks again to the voters for voting for this in November. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Councilman Herndon. We are honored to have you here for this launch. So as I said, the first step in getting a breed restricted permit in the city and county of Denver to keep a restricted breed here legally is to have your dog assessed in person with Denver Animal Protection at the Denver Animal Shelter. So Josh and Avery are going to walk you through that process. Take it away. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Josh Rolfe, I'm the Lieutenant for Denver Animal Protection and uh, next to me is Avery Borden, he's a Sergeant for Denver Animal Protection and we're also uh, two employees uh, for Denver Animal Shelter that are certified to evaluate different dog breeds and determine whether or not a dog is considered uh, one of the three restricted breeds in Denver. Uh, and, and whether the dog meets those standards. And so uh, with us today is Penguin, uh, who has previously been evaluated, but we want to walk through uh, the different points on a dog and, and talk about our assessment process uh, with this animal so that uh, we, can, we can show you kind of what goes into uh, an assessment. So each evaluator does have an evaluation form that they fill out, but the form is not really the, the crux of the evaluation. That form is just meant to uh, be a reference for the evaluator to uh, show the different points that they were looking at on a dog and, and reference back to what they saw at the time they were doing the assessment. What really matters is actually uh, what the dog looks like and the different points on the dog. And so we're just gonna walk through uh, with Penguin what, what that process looks like. And so, the initial step is that we just kind of take an overall sense of the dog, get, get a sense of how the dog walks, how the dog stands, how the dog kind of carries its legs and its head, its tail, uh, how the dog's hips set, and then we kind of focus in more deeply on all the different um, minute points on the, on the dog. So uh, first we look at the, <laughs> she's gonna lay down for you, that make it difficult on your First, we look at uh, the dog's head. And so uh, this dog was evaluated as an American Pit Bull Terrier mix. So she is a mixed breed dog. But the standard for the American Pit Bull Terrier talks about the dog's head being a broad, blunt wedge, right? So that the dog's head should be broad and then kind of taking into account the muzzle and everything should uh, look kind of wedge-shaped as you're looking down on the dog's head. So the, this dog's skull, you measure the broadness between the ears. And so this dog's skull is a little narrower than we would generally expect on a, a purebred American Pitbull Terrier. 
but it is still fairly broad skull. And, and the muzzle is fairly uh, wedge-shaped. Uh, it, it's kind of straight out with just a very slight taper towards the nose. Next, we talk about this stop on the dog's face, and that is the plane where the dog's eyes sit. Uh, they talk about that being a very pronounced stop. That means close to a 90 degree angle with the muzzle and the, and the front plane of the dog's uh, skull where its eyes sit. And so this dog doesn't have as pronounced of a stop as we would like to see, right? Her eyes are set a little further back at an angle uh, than we would normally see on a classic American Pitbull Terrier, uh, but, but not overly so. Uh, then we talk about the ears and the set of the ears. So you generally want wide set ears on, on an American Pitbull Terrier, and they are either rows or half crick shaped. And so rows is exactly what you see in the dog right now, where they're kind of set back on the head and you can kind of see into the ear cavity here. And that's where it gets its name because of the rose. Uh, it looks like a rose opening. Uh, and then if, if the dog were more alert, you would see more of a half crick where the dog's ears kind of fold over uh, onto themselves. Uh, but either one of those is acceptable under the standard. Then we talk about the dog's neck, right? In relation to the rest of the body, you want a medium length, medium width neck uh, that has fairly tight skin. And so we're not saying that there can't be any loose skin. If I pull, you can see the dog has a little bit of loose skin here. Um, but we're talking about it's not overly loose. There's not a ton of droopy skin hanging down here at the bottom of the dog's neck. That's, that's what we're looking for. Same thing at the top of the dog's shoulders. You have a little bit of loose skin here, but it's fairly tight on the dog's body. You don't see a lot of wrinkles right there. And then you go into uh, the shoulders and the forelegs. So the shoulders should be muscular, and this is a dark colored dog, so it's a little difficult to tell, but she does have pretty good muscle tone uh, right here in the shoulders. And you want the legs to be fairly straight down from the body, right? And if you look at her straight on, her legs are pretty straight up and down, right? Next, we look at the dog's uh, chest here, and you measure the width of the chest between the two front legs. And so you want a medium to broad chest. And this dog, again, a little bit narrower than we would normally like to see on a purebred uh, American Pit Bull Terrier, but it is still a fairly medium width uh, chest in relation to the rest of the dog. <coughs> the, <laughs> sorry about it. All right. Uh, the second point we look at on the dog's chest is how deep it is, and that means how far back along the dog's body it goes, right? And so you want a fairly deep chest, which means it goes back a little more than halfway, which it does. The dog's chest ends like right here, uh, its ribcage. And then you want what they call well-sprung ribs, and that means from, from the spine, you want the rib cage to kind of pop like that to the side. And you can see if you guys want to come up in a little bit, that this dog has fairly well sprung ribs. <laughs> she makes this difficult. <laughs> uh, then going, going further back, you look at the loins, which is the point between the dog's rib cage and the beginning of the hips, right? And uh, what they talk about in the breed standard is that you want the loins to be well tucked or slightly tucked. And that means that they're just, they look like they're tucked up under the dog's abdomen here. And you can get a very good sense of that from this dog if you come up and look kind of down the dog's spine. You can see that it is very tucked in right here behind the rib cage. And then it kind of widens out at the hips. Next, uh, we're looking at the, the thigh muscles. Uh, and you want very well-defined thigh muscles. And again, it's hard to tell because the dog is dark colored, but she does have very, very good muscle tone right here in the thighs. <clears throat> then the tail. Uh, it says it should be kind of a natural extension of the dog's spine and come right off the back of the dog, which it does. And then it should hang fairly low uh, and kind of have a slight curve to it. And you can see the dog's pretty relaxed right now, which is great because you can see it just has a very slight curve. When this dog is excited, the tail comes right up over her back and looks very significantly curved. So it can be sometimes difficult to pull these traits out in the dog and, and tell exactly what you're seeing. <clears throat> the feet on the dog, you want to be tight and compact and fairly medium sized in relation to the rest of the animal. So these dog's feet are slightly large for the rest of her. Um, if you're looking at her and then you look down at her feet, you're like, wow, she has got kind of big feet. 
right? And that's exactly what we're talking about. You want them to be more compact so these feet are not entirely correct uh, for the dog's uh, overall uh, standard. Uh, but, they're, but they're not, you know, gigantic or anything like that, which would be uh, a serious thing. And they're not extremely small either. And so, a as you can see, this is why we called her a mixed breed dog, but she is predominantly American Pitbull Terrier.